Welcome to this video series where we're going to be going through the Grade 12 CAT or Computer Application Technology Prac Exam or Paper 1 from November 2024. And this is the first video in the series, so that means we're going to be doing with the word question or question one. So before I start this paper, I just want to show you here under the instructions, they talk about this exe file that you need to click on and enter in a password to extract the data files. So you, for example, might have a folder and you will have something that looks like that. And so we're going to double click on this file. If a message like this pops up, then you say, yes, you do want to run it anyway, because we do trust it. And we are going to extract those files and it's going to ask us for a password. I just reminded in the paper, you'll see there is the password. Make sure that you spell it exactly like it is. So we're going to put a capital N, a hash 24, and then the at symbol. Always check to see that it's correct. And then we're going to click OK. Then if we go to our exam folder, you should see a new folder has arrived. I would suggest renaming that folder to your examination folder because that's going to contain all the data files that you need for your question paper. So I'm going to start opening up question one, which is one solar. And then let's scroll down. And yeah, we've got question one. Just a reminder that in the video description, that we will have a link to the data files and the question paper. So if you want to try this paper out first, I would strongly suggest that you download it, then go try out the paper and then come back and watch the videos to find out where you made your mistakes. So let's start. We're going to come to the paper. We're going to look at 1.1 and it says they edit the author properties to display your examination number. So for that, we're going to come to the file. We're going to come here to the properties of the file. Click on info. And there you can see we're going to change this to your examination number. So we can enter in whatever your examination number is. I don't have an examination number, so I'm just making up some random numbers. But there you can see that your number, whatever your number would have been, would be entered over there. You could have also removed the person, then added an author. That could also work. But there we go. 1.2, we're going to modify the shadow effect of the style solar to any blue color and change the distance to 50 points from the text. Now take note, they're saying the effect of the style. So if we come over here, we should look over here and there is a style there called solar. So we want to edit that style. So I'm going to right click on it and modify it. They wanted to change text effects. So I'm going to come down here to format. I'm going to come to text effects. Let's see what that gives us. So I'm going to click over there on the text effects and there we can see the word shadow. So I'm going to click on shadow over there and we're going to change the color to blue. They said any blue, but if they said blue specifically, then you want that one because you can see if you put your mouse over it, it says blue, but they say any blue and they want the distance to be 50 points. Now at the moment you can see the distance is 24.4. We're going to change that to a 50 and I think those are the only changes that they want. So there you can see the blue shadow effect and it's about 50 distance. So we click OK. Okay, there we can see it's been applied. Then 1.3, ensure the heading for solar system, paragraph and image always remain together. We want to go to this text over here. We want the heading, the text and the image to remain together. Now that's a property of the paragraph. So we're going to click here on paragraph and we're going to come here to line and page breaks. And we're going to keep with next so that they always stay together. So I'm going to click OK. And there you can see that when it moved to the next page, it kept it all together. So if one of these moves to the next page, it will all go together. Next, we're going to insert a cross reference on the text question 1.4 that goes to the Venus bookmark. So we're going to find the text. There we go. They normally highlight the things that you're going to be editing. So we want to insert a cross reference. So I'm going to select that text and we're going to come here to referencing. And there you can see there's a cross reference. So we're going to insert a cross reference. And we want to go to a bookmark. So if I click here, you see there's bookmarks as one of the lists. And we can see that there is Venus is one of the bookmarks that is there. So we want to click on that one. Yes, please. They don't say anything else, but if I click insert and then close. And so there you can see the text has been added. It's linked to the bookmark. If I press control, it'll actually take me to that bookmark. But another thing you press is you can press Alt F9. And there you can see that there's the cross reference to Venus. So Alt F9, there we can see evidence of that cross reference. Then 1.5, find the word NASA, insert an end note on the word as follows. We're going to use the ABC number format and the end note text must be America. So there's the word NASA. So we're going to click on NASA and we're going to come back to referencing and insert an end note. Now, if I just click on insert end note, then it's going to do its own default settings. So I'm going to undo that. I don't want to do that just yet. I'm going to rather select it and click over here on the footnote and end note options. And so there we can see we've got an end note. We can specify the number format. So we want the ABC option. So if I click insert, you see it puts the A there. Now we can put the word America over there as our text. 
this way we can get the exact ones that we want but first make sure that you select the text that you want to put the end note to if i scroll up to nasa there you can see nasa there you can see the end note that says america that's the letter a 1.6 edit the image below the heading planets to appear as shown below so there's the image so let's go down to that image let's find it so there we go, there's the image that we're looking at. What do they want us to change? So straight away, there's four marks. There's a couple of things that we need to change. The thickness of the image border is three points. So we want a three point image border, but you see it's a dashed border. So first of all, let's go look at our image. So I'm gonna first of all, click on the image and then we can come to picture format and we're gonna put a picture border and they said, they don't mind what color it is. So I'm just gonna use a black border, but they said here that it's a three point border. So I'm gonna come here to wait and make it a three point border, but then we are going to change to a dashed one, which I think it's gonna be like that dash line. So if we look there, we can see that we are already getting that design correct. And then you'll see that there is a caption too. It's called space five and it's called planets as the text. So we must insert a caption. So I'm gonna click on the image and we're gonna come here to referencing and we're gonna insert a caption. Now it said space. I wonder if there's a space option. So there is no space option. So we're going to create a new label for it and call it space. Oh, so it says space five already for us. So we know we're on the right track. So space is the label that we want. And the text we're going to put there is planets. I'm just going to put a space after it. But we're going to put a colon there as well. So, so it can look exactly like we want it to look. So we've created a space label. We've entered the text planets. Click OK. And there we go. I think it looks exactly like how they want it in the diagram. There we go. It looks spot on. So there we go. So the border with the specifications of the border would be two marks and then the space label and that would and the actual text of the caption. I think that'll be another two marks and that's how we'll get the four marks for that. Then 1.7, convert the text below the heading differences between, let's go find that text. There, there it is right there. So we can convert that text to a table and then we're going to apply a list table style. So we're going to take that text. So this text over here, so we can select this text and we're going to come here to, there's no table option, but we can insert and under table, convert the text to a table. And it's going to ask us, as we can see there's two columns. Yes, and we've got six rows. That should be fine. So there we go. It's in a nice little table. And then we can apply any style. So if we come here to design, but if you remember correctly, it actually says any list table style. So we must use a list style. So if I come here, if I see all these styles, there you can see the list table styles. So they want one of these options. So if I click one of those, for example, let's use that. That's a list table style. There we go. I think that'll be good enough to get the marks for that one. So remember they did mention a list table style. So that means you can't just use any of the styles for this table. You must look for the word list tables. Okay. Then 1.8, format and change the current list style planets of the list that starts with one Mercury and ends with 14 known, to, known moons to display as the example below. So let's go find that list quickly. We scroll down. There we go. There's our list. So we can see that it is a bulleted list, a multi level list. So let's first select all this text. We can see where it ends. It goes right till then. So I'm going to select all this text and we're going to modify this multi level list. So we're going to define a new multi level list. So that's what it is currently. Now, if you look at the diagram, the first thing is one dot and they've got a one dot. So I think our level one is fine, but our level two is an issue. If you look level two, it's got an A, but they want it to be a bulleted list with that little diamond shape. If we come here to level two, we're going to change the number of style and let's see if we can find a diamond. There's a circle and a solid diamond. So we're going to use that as our option. So it's one of the options. There we go. So that means we're on the right track. And then we click OK. And if we compare it to the diagram, so there's one Mercury and then there are four diamonds, one Mercury and and oh, there's one missing. What's one's missing? Ah, do you notice how that text is now missing one year? So we need to add that one. There's a little sneaky little thing there. Make sure that it's exact. Oh, there you can see one year. It is there. We just need to add that. So I'm going to press enter over there so that it becomes its own bullet. So there we can see that it matches everything. Two has got five bullets. Two, we can only see the first three, but we've got the first three correct. Okay, just do that little double check to make sure it's exactly the same. So change that to a diamond shape and then remember mercury's one year is 88 earth years that had to be its own bullet over there 1.9 add page numbering in the footer as follows insert automatic page numbers in the format of page x of y and align the odd page numbers to the beyonce i mean to the left to the left and then even page numbers to the right 
So let's first do the automatic page number. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to, we can just double click into the footer and we're going to insert page numbers at the bottom and we want page X of Y. So there's page X of Y and I'm going to put it in over here. So there we can see we are on the even numbers. So if you remember correctly, even pages must be to the right. So I'm going to click on that and move that actually to the right. So we can move that to that side. Now you can see they're all on the right. However, on these ones, I want to move to the Beyonce, I mean the left. But if I move this back over here, you'll notice that it's sort of undone what I did previously. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to first on the head and footer tab, say we want different odd even pages. And by doing that, you can see that even ones have completely disappeared. So actually, let's go and move this now to the Beyonce to the left. And then on an even page number, we're going to insert another page number, exact, exact same format, page one of Y, but we want the even numbers to be on the right hand side. So if we click on that, there you can see evens on the right, and then odd is on the Beyonce, I mean to the left. And you can see that applies to all of the pages. So if you are applying to odd and even pages, it's probably best to first select the odd even pages, then do the changes. So let's close the head and footer. So there we go. And then our last question, insert the one black image as a watermark on the last page only. So the last page only. So I'm going to go to the last page. So what I'm going to do then for the last page only is I'm going to create a section break. So if I come over here, you can see that we are all part of the same section. So I'm actually going to come over here to this part and in under layout, I'm going to insert a section break. So we have a completely new section. So if I double click here, you can see here we are section three and there's section two, which means I can do things to this page that aren't connected to the previous page. So if I come here to design, we can come here to watermark, we can insert a custom watermark and we want a picture. Let's go select a picture. We want to get it from a file. You'll go to your exam folder and there you'll see the one back file that we want to insert. I'm going to not make it wash out. They didn't say anything about it being washed out. I want to see it clearly. They don't say anything about it being washed out. So I want to see it clearly. So I'm not going to say it's washed out. I want to see that it's actually applied. So I'm going to click OK. So there you can see that the image is applied to the section. But if you see here, it's applied to all the sections. So actually, when I come over here, because the watermark is actually a part of the header and the footer, if I click here on the head and footer, you can actually see that you can access that image. So I'm going to now unlink to the previous. And if I look above to this section watermark, if I remove this watermark from section two and I come to section three, you can see our watermark is still there. So if I click away, you can see that it's not on this section. However, because we've got an odd and even page number, let's just check the next page as well. Like, oh, so it's still on this one. So if we go to the head and foot over here and we remove it from the odd and even pages from both options. So I click on the watermark, but I want to be able to get rid of it. So if I come here, is there a way that I can cut it or we'll click on delete? If I press delete, it actually starts deleting the text, which is not what I want. And then jumps there. So there must be a way that we can select just this particular item. And so there isn't really a way that I can really get rid of it. I'm just going to move completely off the screen so that we can't even see it. So if I do that for some reason and I just go down here, you can see that we do still have the watermark on the last page but we do not have it on the odd pages and we don't have it on the even pages either. And as you go up, you can see it follows on. I don't know why it won't let me delete it, but I just moved it off the screen. That way we can try to have a workaround to try and make sure that it doesn't appear on all the other pages. So there we go. It was quite a weird question, that last one, but there we go. That's what I would do to make sure that it's only on the last page. So there we go. That's question one. Now we're going to move on to question two of the exam paper. For the other videos in this video series, make sure you click out the video description as well as look at our playlist tab on our YouTube channel at Miss Long Arty and Cat. And please support the channel. That's all we ask is that you subscribe and leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.